What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today is the start of the Micro Heli 230S build. So in this video, we are going to build the mainframe. So now in part of building the mainframe, you need some parts from your old 230. The only thing you're going to need is of course your servos. Now I went ahead and have the Micro Heli DS008 HVT servos. Full metal case, metal gear servos. Uh, if you're just using your stock 3050s, you won't need these, but if you wanted to have a nice upgrade, great looking servos, can't wait to try them. But that's something you will not need if you are using your stock servos, but you will need your push rods. So I went ahead and labeled my push rods before I took them off. We have aileron, we have our pitch. Now pitch is the left side. If you're looking from the tail of the helicopter forward, your pitch is your left servo link, your aileron, you can see it is your right servo link and your elevator is the front servo so we have our ball links our ball ends and we have our links so i went ahead and labeled those so we know where to put them back it's going to be the same with the micro heli frame you might have to adjust your linkages a little bit of course you do all that with the radio setup you are building a complete frame basically a brand new helicopter so we have our parts laid out here so we have our main frame sides and carbon bottom trays. So we're gonna go ahead and open all this stuff up. We have all the metal of the frame, all the aluminum bearing blocks, servo mounts, tail boom mount, bottom tray. And then of course our skids and our skid mounts. So we have all of our parts laid out here. We have our push rods, linkages, we have our servos. So I'm gonna go ahead, open everything up, get it all laid out so we can see what we're working with and then open up all the servos i'm going to go ahead and get the servos ready for the mounts or for the, the servo horns i'm sorry so let's go ahead let's open everything up and let's get started on the assembly all righty so we have everything laid out now it's all back along here but we're going to be working here so the very first step to building this frame is you need these two carbon fiber pieces these are your servo mounts. So the very first step, if you read the instructions, everything, the first step is the servo mounts. So we're going to need these two little plastic blocks. We're going to need these two. And of course, you are going to need your two servos. So we're going to grab our servos. Now, mind you, the spline goes forward towards the nose of the helicopter. So we take our blocks here. So you're going to have your screws. Oh, sorry, I mean, I'm not getting to you guys. You're going to have your plastic, or your, your screws to go into plastic, which if you are taking your servos out of your 230, it would be the servo screws that you took out. So now the way that this goes is if you noticed, you're going to have three holes on this side and you have two holes on this side. So the three holes go towards the front of the helicopter, towards the nose. Oh, and you throw it like that. So you don't throw it like that, though. But so those are gonna go towards the front of the helicopter. And now you're gonna grab your servo, spline towards the front, and you are going to run your servo lead through here like this. Very simple. You're going to take your servo and it fits right through the block. Now what we want is we need those little blocks. So grab your little blocks. There is a 1.5 millimeter Allen in each one. So let's go ahead and take the Allens out you're going to take your blocks all right so we have our screws out of the blocks so now we're going to take our frames and we are going to remember three holes towards the front take your blocks and then your blocks are going to simply you're going to run one screw like this so grab your one screw feed it through the carbon middle hole into your block here and tighten it down. Now you don't need to add anything to the plastic. You can if you would like. It is not necessary. If you want to add a little bit of CA, you can. Well, let's take our other screw. We're going to run it through the carbon like this. And of course, you always have to drop something at least once. I don't think you could ever build without dropping something. And then you want it to sit to where it it sits down inside like this, so where it's flush. You want the flush, the plastic to be flush with the carbon. So now we're gonna take, there's a little, little uh, 
spacer, metal spacer. Now that's going to get a little dab of Loctite. So get your Loctite ready. Get your rubbing alcohol ready. Again, remember, you only need a tiny, tiny bit. So this cutout goes towards the front of the helicopter. And then you're going to run this screw through the top hole of the back of the carbon frame plate. And then you're going to run your little tiny aluminum spacer. So now that we got that done, we can go ahead and put the other side on. So same thing. We are going to put to where the notch both line up, all our holes line up. Let's flip this little tray over and we will just run our screws down again with the plastic, I believe they're called Durlon blocks. They're the stuff that you use in boating, that white plastic that's super strong, super hard, but they could be 3D printed. They actually, they are 3D printed. I was wrong. 3D printed, should have known, but run your screw down, snug it up. You don't need to go overboard. Make sure it is square, it is flush. Again, no need to strip screws out here. This is just plastic. Screw it down till it's snug, tighten it up. And then now we need to put our top, last top screw in. Again, a little bit of thread lock. You don't need a lot, no, no need to go overboard, just a dab. I gotta find where that thing went, oh, here it is. So now you should have something that looks exactly like this. So this is your servo mount. So your block's in the middle, it is flush, top, bottom, and everything is tightened down. So now this is when we take our servos. So you're going to take one servo, which will be this guy, we'll do this one first. We are going to run our wires through. Now the wires probably run through here. No, their wires are gonna run out through here. Now, of course, we may have to pull the wires and redo the wiring when we go to wire the helicopter, but just, just for now, you can see what we are doing. And this is going to make it very tricky to get the wires to go through here in the servo to go through here. Hmm. Maybe that's why you're supposed to do it before you put the side on. Hold on one second, I'll be back. Okay, so I figured it out. So when you assemble your, your block, leave one of the blocks out. So I did the I kept the side together that had the top support right here. You have this little top support and then we have our block in the middle. So now, if you are using the servos, you have to run the spacers that they give you in the back. So they give you this little bag of spacers, a bunch of them different. You can run as many sizes as you want. So you want the servos to sit flush with each other. You want them to be flush. Uh, I'm not sure if the 3050s, I'm pretty sure you don't have to do nothing. You can just screw them right in. But with these, I ended up running three spacers. There's three spacers here on each one to give me the perfect flush fit. So that way when the servo arm goes on, we don't have no problem of the servos running into each other. So that's what we want. So now what we do is we're going to run this block in just like the other side. We'll push it all the way up and flush and then we'll grab our little hex screws, little Allens. Again, everything is a 1.5 so far. Let's not move the carbon fiber too far out. Let's go ahead and run it down. Let's not tighten it up yet. Let's get the other one. And we will do this side. Screw it down until it tightens up. Screw it down until it tightens up. So now our block is put back in. Now you can see the spacing I'm talking about. So now we need to put spacers in and run the screws down. So I'm gonna do that real quick. There's no point in making this a five, six minute segment of me trying to put the spacers in because you gotta lay them in there then run the screws down, it's fun. But once you get your spacers in, run your screws down just like I did on this side, spacers, screw. And then we are done with the servo part and we can move on to adding the bearing blocks. Okay, so servo block is done. As you can see here, again, three spacers per side. We are sitting flush and 
little groove down and splines to the front. So wires to the front of the helicopter. So now it is time to install the bearing blocks. So we have a lower bearing block and an upper bearing block. So now we're gonna grab our lower bearing block and we are going to slide it into here. So we need to remove this one screw real quick. I completely did not see this screw. So let's move this screw out real fast. Okay, and let's grab our other screw that we already got ready. So you're gonna grab your bearing block and it fits into here just like this. See that, it just fits down in there nicely. Take your screw and just snug this up for now. Oop, grab another screw, dab a Loctite. Don't need much. Run it into here. So you're gonna have two screws on each side. So you have one, two, flip the casing over. You're gonna have two more, one, two. So that'll be four screws total on the bottom. Let's run that like so, get that tightened down. Do the same for the back one and then we can move on to the upper bearing block. So now grab your upper bearing block it should fit down in there. Might have to pray a little bit on the carbon, but it should fit down just like this. So now we can grab our screw, a little bit of Loctite, and get our screw ready to go in. Go ahead and run your screw down. Do the same with the other side. Grab another one of your screws. Every screw is 1.5 millimeter driver so far, and they all are the same length as of right this second, so that makes it nice. You can unscrew them all of the little screws, put them in a pile. Okay, and you just wanna snug that up. You don't wanna go too overboard because we can't really adjust, see? We can't adjust yet, so you don't wanna go too crazy on tightness. Just snug it so it can still move until we get it and lock it down. So now that we have our lower bearing block and upper bearing block installed, we are ready to move on to the next part. All right, so the next part is the front half of the frame. So when we have these carbon fiber little brackets, there is two of them, one and two. So now we're gonna take our little mainframe servo tray and we're going to position this. So you want your point to be positioned like this. So this is going to screw down just like that and that is how we want it so let's get it screw ready now again all of these are the same size so far so let's get one screw ready and this is why i said don't tighten up that upper bearing block yet it's because we need to be able to position that bearing block so everything lines up see how it still moves okay so let's go ahead and then the other side is where we get servo for the elevator mounted through. So let's go ahead and snug that down. So now we lock it together. And then just like doing lug nuts on a car, let's do the other side. Kind of get a nice little cross going here. Now, excuse the wiring for now because it's going to be all over the place till we're done. And who knows, I might have to pull something back apart to run the wires the way I want to. But especially with the King Cobra canopy, we need to make sure that the wiring is as clean as possible. And of course, it wouldn't be a West Hobby's build if it wasn't as clean as possible. So let's go ahead and run this screw. Now we can tighten these down. And now before the Loctite dries, let's go ahead and snug this one up. So now we're just gonna run all of our screws in like that. Very easy, very simple. So far it has been a great build. Very well thought out. And I hope this video helps some of you guys out there that wanna build a Micro Heli mainframe or the Micro Heli performance kit. So now this side is done. So now we are going to roll the entire assembly over. And then now this is the side that gets the elevator servo. So now we need to figure out if the elevator servo needs a spacer. 
So splines are going to go up on the elevator servo. So it's going to go in this way. And it's going to go just like that. And by the looks of this, it does not need spacers. The elevator horn looks dead in line with the main shaft. It might need... Yeah, it might need a spacer or two. Yeah, you know what? We're going to put some spacers in there because we're going to have to figure that the arm needs to be in center of the shaft. So yeah, we're going to put some spacers. So I'm going to put the spacers in, not bore you with that, and then we'll get back to putting the other All side. Right. So we got the spacers in, three on each side. Now that'll give us perfect lineup. Once we put the horn on, ball link will be dead smack with the middle of the main shaft. So we just ran the wires through the side. Again, the wires are going to be a mess until we are in the final stages so now this is going this plate is going to slip over everything and we will go ahead and run one screw down like so grab another one a little bit of loctite run it down like so and you're basically just going to tighten all four of these down just like this and then the upper part of the frame is pretty much done we just need to put the anti-rotation bracket on which is one screw super easy and the upper part of the frame is done then we can do the lower part of the frame so let's go ahead we're going to tighten all these screws down and we will get to starting the lower half all right so we're done with the upper part of the frame as you see here we got the servos mounted everything is tight and locked tighted down so we're going to set that aside for now now it is time to start on the lower half of the frame. So I just went ahead and screwed my motor down. Right now we're gonna run a nine tooth pinion. Uh, we may up this or we play with pinions later, but for now, nine tooth, we Loctited it flat side of the mount to your motor. Now, of course, if you're running a 230 motor, it'll be a lot smaller, but this is the 300X motor that we were running in the old 230. So we have our frame sides, we have our bottom plate. Now this is gonna be the plate where you're landing gear block screw to, and this is your ESC or your FBL mount. This is where your 636 or whatever receiver you're running, whatever FBL you're running will mount to this. So we have all of our screws set aside. So now first thing is first, we are going to grab our frame sides. So now you have your frame sides here, of course, this is front of the frame, this is back of the frame. This is where your battery will mount to. And these little grommets are for your FBL tray to slide into place, which will give it a nice dampened, get rid of some vibrations. So we're gonna grab our bottom tray here. Now, if you notice this tray, you will notice, I already pulled the screws out, but the back screws are bigger than the front on this side. And the back, the bigger screws and the design, so now you'll notice too that this is going to be the bottom. This is going to be the top. So we are gonna wanna put this on the frame like this. So bigger screws to the back of the frame. You notice the holes are bigger in the back, smaller on the front. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run our screws down, and then same with this side. We're gonna put this side of the frame on, just like this. And of course, you want this flat side here to be where your mounts for your skids go, and you want these little arrows to be pointing forward. So let's go ahead, let's grab ourselves a small screw first. Of course, a dab of Loctite, one and a half millimeter driver. Like always, there's only four screws that I've found so far that are not one and a half millimeter, and those are for the skids. But Micro Heli does give you a little Allen wrench, which is a 1.27 millimeter. But if you don't have one, but of course, I have a 1.27 millimeter. But it is super nice that they give you a driver or a wrench for people that don't have one because nothing is worse than when you're working on a helicopter in building something and you can't finish the job because you don't have the driver. So I highly recommend everybody out there who works on helicopters, builds helicopters, doesn't matter. If you're touching helicopters, do yourself a favor and get yourself a driver set. Now, I highly recommend MIP, of course. You don't have to get these. These are just the best drivers that you can buy. They are a little expensive, but well worth the money. You can get this set on Amazon for like 10 or 20 bucks or whatever it is for a whole set of it. So now something to note, these back screws, now this is a front screw for the backside. 
This is a bigger two, like a bigger two and a half millimeter size screw. It's still a 1.5 driver, but do not Loctite this. We'll run it in and I'll show you the screw here. It is much bigger. Do not run, do not Loctite this because this is gonna be where your boom supports run through. So we're just gonna run it down like so, leave it loose, no Loctite yet. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to run Loctite, tighten all these screws down and we'll be back when we get the other frame side ready to go. All right, we're ready for the other frame side, but real quick, your, your fly barless tray, this is where your mount is. Now you can go ahead and mount your electronics now if you want to. Sometimes it is easier. I'm gonna hold off just until I know where I'm gonna wire everything, but that's gonna push into the grommets like that. You're just gonna push that in and it should look like this. It should stay floating. You're gonna go ahead and grab your other frame side. Again, this is your battery tray, your strap for your battery, arrows forward. And then we're going to nice and neatly and gently, it might take a little bit of work, but you want to push these little tabs into these grommets, just like that. And like I said, it might take a little bit of work, a little bit of pushing, but there we go. Now we got those tabs in. We wanna push and line everything up. So now your frame, lower half of the frame is together, just like that. Now we just run our screws down, Loctite everything, and we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so we got all of our screws Loctited down, all the small ones, again, your back screws do not Loctite, leave them loose, because this is where your boom supports are gonna go through, so you're gonna have to take them back out <clears throat> and put Loctite on again. So now it is time for the skids. So if you are using your stock 230 skids, which you can use with this frame, you don't need to do what I'm doing now. So now this is the part of the 1.27 millimeter driver. And again, they do give you an Allen wrench in the kit, but I'm using my own. If you don't have one, you already have it there. So now let's put a dab of Loctite on these screws and we're going to take our landing gear brackets. Let's run the screw in to hold it in place. And of course you always have to drop everything at least one time. So put it in place, and then we're gonna take our mainframe, and we're just gonna get one started. Let's get it almost tight, just till it's snug enough. If you notice, now we can put our other one in, so we'll keep the mainframe upside down. We'll run our other screw in and do it on the back the same way, and then we will screw our skids on, super easy trying to make this video where it's not super long and boring for you guys, but teach you what you need to learn about assembling this frame. So now we do the same thing on the back and then we can just take, oh, sorry. And we can just take and run our skids on like that. Super easy, put your screws in and you are good to go. So I will be right back once I get the other part on. All right, so we have the skids on, perfect. Everything is good like it should be. So skids are on, everything fit like it should. So one thing I gotta say, MicroHeli does design incredible stuff. I mean, everything went together, zero issues, zero modifications so far, extremely pleased. Now again, you just have your one screw here and here, and I like how they have doubler carbon plates, and these skids are super thick, not going anywhere. I will be using some yellow, like neon yellow vinyl, just to give it some color. You can get those, that's your choice. There's a bunch of different kits again. So we have our tray in for the fly barless unit. We have our lower frame size on. So now the next thing. So the next thing to do is I'm going to slide the motor into place. So now I would do this now. Uh, you don't have to because of you're using a, if you're using a 230 motor, it will slide through the bottom. But I'm going to slide mine through the top and then I might end up having to pull this back out later. But on the frame sides, you'll notice there is notches right here. So those notches are for adjusting your gear mesh. You can slide the motor forward and backwards depending on what pinion you are running and what gearing you wanna go with. So for now, again, like I said, I might be changing my gearing later. I might have to modify the slots, make them a little bigger, but that's not nothing of the kit's fault. That is for my own gear setup that I want to run. So. Now we're just gonna grab our screw, and these are still a 1.5 driver, but they are bigger screws. We are going to slide them in and just, we're going to snug these down to what we think is a good spot. 
Now, technically, I actually shouldn't even have put any Loctite on these, so I'm not going to put Loctite on the other ones because I don't know where these are going yet. But remember to Loctite them once you figure out your gear mesh. So I'm just going to snug all these down for now. And then, right, so next step is to put the battery tray on. So now here's your battery tray, aluminum, of course, really nice, machined beautifully. Flat side, of course, is going to go up and your cutout side will go down. So this is going to be super simple. You will just simply slide it into place, grab your driver, grab a screw, little Loctite like always, and put your four screws in and you are good to go. Just go ahead, put your four screws in like this, tighten them all down, and your battery tray will be installed. And then we can move on to installing the upper part of the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead, put all four screws in, one in each corner, and then we'll go up to installing the upper part. Before we install the upper part of the frame, let's go ahead and install the boom block. So you have your bolt here for clamp, and then this is your stop for when you slide the boom in. And of course your wires will come out this bottom hole. So now that we got the battery tray installed, four screws put in all the way around, everything Loctited. Now let's go ahead and let's install the boom block. So you'll notice here there's a hole that is for you to slide your driver through to tighten up your boom, the clamp. So for now, we are going to just run one screw in it. We already have Loctite on the screw and ready. Let's just go ahead and get one started. Let's snug it up. And let's grab another screw. They're all, again, the same size, little 1.6 by 3 millimeter screws with a 1.5 driver. And then we can install the top plate. A little too much Loctite on that. So we'll just do the other side here. Let's get this all snug down. And then we can install the top plate. And then the mainframe itself, after we get the upper bearing block on, or the upper block on, is completely finished. So just run these four screws in. You don't need much Loctite, just a little bit. And then I'll do the last screw off camera, but then you're gonna take your actual carbon fiber plate. This is the last plate to go on top. Now, technically you can use this for a fly barless mounting plate. They say that it is a GPS plate, which not exactly sure what a GPS on a 230 is for, but you can use it for if you're running, maybe you might run an icon on one or whatever your fly bar list controllers of choice. Now, mind you, they do use the counter sunken screws for this. So you just go ahead, run your screws down. They will be flush mounted. So you get a nice flush surface. I'm going to run the other three in off camera, but then your tray is done and your boom block is mounted. Your bolt is in line with this hole right here. So you can slide in to tighten your boom up. And then we'll move on. Let me get this tightened down. And we'll move on to the upper bearing block or the upper frame block. All right, we're at the last step of the micro heli frame build. So we have a screw ready with some Loctite and we have our upper part of the bearing block completely assembled, the main frame. So basically all you're gonna do here, super easy, super simple. You're gonna slide this in and down just like this until it lines up. And that's it. You're going to run your screws down and your mainframe is completely assembled. Try to do this and get it on camera. So we're going to snug this one up. We're going to grab another screw. We're going to put some Loctite on it, of course. Loctite everything. We're going to run it into this screw hole down here. Super important that you lock everything down. Loctite everything down. You don't want nothing coming loose, no vibrations. And we can snug this side up. And then we do the same on the other side. We'll set this down for a second. Grab our screw. A little bit of Loctite. And we are good to go. We can move on to the next uh, part of this build, which will be the head assembly but this will conclude this video of course because i know this video is already long but i just wanted a great video so that way 
everybody knows how to assemble this frame. If you are going to buy this frame, I highly recommend it. It went together fantastic, super easy build, honestly, really, really easy. It looks fantastic, super nice and strong. Once everything is together, it just, it all goes together perfectly. I had zero issues with this build whatsoever. I mean, I didn't have to do nothing. It all went together like it should. Once it's all together, the frame is so rigid and solid. I mean, it looks great. So I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helped some of you. If you are building the Micro Heli mainframe for the Blade 230S, here's a video for you to show you how to build it. And of course, you don't have to use these servos. You can use your stock 3050 servos. But if you want a nice set of servos, I highly recommend them. The Micro Heli MHDS008HV. Great servos so far. I like, I'm impressed with the quality of them. Have not used them yet, but I'm sure they will be great. They look great. So now, thank you guys so much for watching. The next step will be the head build. So give this video a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day. And thank you very much to Micro Heli for allowing me to do this build series for you guys and for them. So I greatly appreciate it, Micro Heli. Thank you. Have a great day.